That's huge. That's as big as it goes. All right, I'm dead in the water. Y'all need to move the picker. And I'm on. I'm on. Uh, go get a rivet gun. I'm gonna take this with me. Welcome back to the channel guys. It is Wednesday, September the 28th and uh, yeah, got the long sleeves out today. Uh, about 52 degrees here this morning. Uh, here's what we got on tap for today. That cotton picker that's right behind y'all. We're going to be getting that to the field today and possibly picking some cotton later on today. So uh, we got a few things we got to go over on it. Uh, got to do some greasing, got to clean out a few doors. Uh, I got to check the spindles, if they're rubbing the water pads correctly. Uh, filled it up with water, spindle cleaner, already done that. Uh, we've already put grease in it, in the tank. We filled the grease tank up, but just, just a few little things, airing up the tires, making sure we got air pressure in all of them. Um, so anyway, that's what we'll be doing first thing this morning. Me and Mark will be working on that. Dad is headed to Otagaville. He want to go check on those beans to see if he is gonna cut beans in Otogaville or he's gonna cut over here in the valley where I sprayed the mox on yesterday. Uh, he's going to see which one it looks like it's gonna be ready first. James, James is over there on the road scrape. He is uh, reshaping that ditch that Wayne was working on. Uh, he's over there doing that and Wayne's got the loader over there helping him on that. Uh, the hurricane, Ian, it is basically taking a right turn there it is right there this is us so it's basically going to go to the right of us not even going to come near us basically the only effects we'll see from in is uh we're going to get some wind i don't even think it's any chance of rain so basically just a little bit of wind which is um perfect for us but i hate it for georgia hopefully uh hopefully we'll keep on going right and get back out in the ocean and uh not affect anybody so that's what we got going on today guys sit back enjoy the video and uh let's get started you clean the doors. Look at what they did. Got me to do it. I think it's better. I take all of them off. Take them down. Why? You told me you were safe in the street. Right? That when you get cooked, that one you can die. Are they real dirty? No, they ain't real dirty. Um. Just be careful. Don't be real dirty. Can you just flip them over and tap on them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess do. I guess do it like that. Okay. Before I start greasing, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up here. This is what we're gonna air the tires up. That's the next thing Mark's gonna do once he, uh, he's taking off the doors up under there. Uh, I guess we forgot to do that this winter when we cleaned it up. But anyway, he's uh, there's a lot of little trap doors under there and he's taking them off one by one, flipping them over, cleaning them out. Uh, just basically getting rid of a fire hazard and that way we'll start off the season clean. So uh, that's what he's doing. And uh, once he gets done with that, he is gonna uh, start airing up the tires.
Okay, yeah, that's a lot of grease fittings on this thing. Uh, still not through greasing, but the, pretty much the last thing that we have to grease is these drive shafts right here. Anyway, that's the last thing we got to grease. Um, then the next thing we got to do, these gearboxes right up here. Anyway, we got to go through and make sure they got enough oil in all the gearboxes. And uh, then one other thing I got to do is uh, this is a little time consuming, but basically I got to go through each row unit and uh, just take a look at these water pads right here and make sure the spindle is just barely rubbing the water pads. You guys got to kind of rock it back and forth and go down every one and uh, make sure it's touching the spindle like I want it to. You just want it to barely rub. You don't want to be pressing down too hard and a lot of them won't be touching at all. Sometimes you got to tap them down with a hammer. So um, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll adjust the water pad column on all the row units, front and back. And um, let's see, is there anything else? Clean the cab out, uh, get diesel, death, Mark's airing up the tires right now. Um, sure there's something I'm forgetting, but uh, I think once we get all that done, we'll probably be ready to get on the road. Oh yeah, I got one more thing I remember. The chain behind that cover right there. Anyway, when I was up there greasing, I noticed it was real slack. So we'll adjust the chain on that one right there. And then we got all all the chains. That's another thing I forgot. So. Yeah, we're not done yet. All right, this is uh, what we're gonna be replacing next. This little new piece will go right on here. It's got two bolts we gotta take off right here. But as you can see, this is really worn thin. And when that gets really thin, this will start bending and get caught all, all up in here. This is what gauges your ground height. So basically this rides on the ground right here. And this little electronic little solenoid right here gauges uh, how close basically you want your heads running to the ground. Uh, I know you can get the poly pieces, the yellow poly plastic, uh, but anyway, we never have put them back on. They come with the machine new once it wears out. We just put the uh, iron one back on, leave the uh, leave the poly off. Don't ask me why, it's what we've always done, so we're gonna keep doing it that way. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna take that off and um, put this one on. Then I'm gonna get Mark to do it all the way across. I think it's five of them. So that's it. Uh, we'll give it a little test, make sure it didn't, does not get hung up in here. Make sure we got everything lined up. It'll last a long time. tension on it. What do you think? Looks a lot better to me. You don't want to get chains too tight. They got to have a little bit of flex. All right, put a little spray on it. Hit it with the good stuff. All right, explain what you done. Uh, I'm going to check by the water pad setting. Uh, you have to lower it till you start seeing it flex the water pads right there. And uh, water pad cleans your spindle. It's not your doffer. So every time it comes around, it's cleaning that spindle for a, for a new bite of fresh cotton. And uh, it puts a little bit of soap, which makes it slick. It grabs the cotton, comes around the doffer, will knock it off, knock the cotton off. 
And uh, if, you, if you don't have it set right, then it'll start wrapping and these spindles won't be working and you won't be picking good. So what are you looking at right here? Um, what are you looking for? I'm looking at straight across. It's pretty dark right here. But I want to see some flex on those pads. And I don't see any right yet. Oh, got it. Yeah. All right, doffer time. Man, we just keep finding more and more stuff the more we get under here and tinker with it. Uh, we got belt on the water pump right there that's real slack. The belts on the fan were slack, but um, anyway, we're gonna get it. It's just taking time. What are you looking for? My gloves. What do you need them for? They throw rocks in the pond. You wanna say hey to everybody? Hey. Why are you out of school? Because it's teacher's conference, teacher's conference day. They're talking about you at the conference. Yes, and everybody else. They're talking good things about you or bad things? Good things. All right, you said you need some gloves. All right. You need two gloves or one? Two. Wait, wait, wait. Five dollars. Ten dollars. All right, guys, got some different basketballs this time. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Y'all see that? Four out of five. I'll take it. Guys, the picker is uh, ready to go. But first thing we're going to do this morning, before we get on the road and get moving, uh, I ordered a new tarp for our grain cart. And uh, anyway, it came in. So uh, we're going to see if we can get that on the uh, grain cart this morning. Kind of let the traffic die down just a little bit. And uh, then we're going to get on the road to Lounsborough. We will be picking some cotton today. You need me today. Get my rivet gun and get a rivet. Bring, bring everything here. Bring me that neat pad. That's not going to work. Why? I don't know how that's going to go in there. You got to do this. Crap. Wait a minute. I didn't put it in. <laughs> it was black people on the tailgate. Yeah, I forgot to put it in. <laughs> I'm not seeing a little black thing on the tailgate. I thought that ain't going to work. <laughs> I think it says bad. I think it says broke. That's what the E, I couldn't figure out what the E is on the end. It's a bro. Uh, piece of junk. Shoot. That's as big as it goes. All right, I'm dead in the water. Y'all need to move the picker. And I'm on, I'm on, uh, go get a rivet gun. I'm gonna take this with me. go 16 miles an hour so uh, it'll be a long trip all right guys I don't know if y'all can hear me but we've made it to the field uh, this is the end row right here we're gonna go ahead and pick this end row that way traffic coming in here they can ride over here and they won't be tearing up cotton getting tractors in here and everything uh, it is nine o'clock right now We've basically had no dew. I'm just gonna get out here and just fill the cotton just to make sure uh, we can. it's ready to go. Can I pick cotton with the dew on it if it's wet? So anyway, I just wanted to put my hands on it just to make sure it's good and dry, and it is. So yeah, we're here. Now we gotta get the cotton picker and picking mode. We gotta get it out of transport mode. Does all this funky stuff. Y'all see what I'm talking about. And uh, 
yeah, then we'll be ready to pick. First Cottonville of 2022 season. I was so nervous I didn't film any of it because there's just a lot of things that can go wrong when you're making that first bell. So I just put the camera down, want to concentrate on watching everything, making sure nothing is going wrong because a lot of things can mess up and uh, it can shut you down for a long time. If, if, if this bell does not wrap right, uh, you'll be down for a while, but anyway, did good, so I think we're good to go. We're gonna finish up these end rows and then we'll get out into the field and start opening up that field. But uh, yeah, looks good. Picking pretty clean. Um, but we'll have plenty of time to go over all that in some other videos, but yeah, let's get to harvesting. There's one other thing you wanna do once you make your first bell, is you kinda wanna go over and look at all your heads and make sure you don't have any cotton that's wrapping on these spindles. You want to make sure they look good and clean top to bottom that looks good a little route right there that was probably just where i stopped good 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 and uh a little bit right there I think that was some old cotton that was on there. That's starting to come off. Okay, I think we're good. Well, guys, we are picking. I think I've made like 10 round modules uh, so far. Cotton has turned out really good. I've been grinning the whole time I've been picking like this. I mean, there's nothing like picking good cotton. It's just, can't explain it. It just, it just gives you the best feeling, I guess, because you're making money and you're so proud of the crop that you've grown all year, taken care of, and it produced. It gives you something back. So uh, yeah, I am loving it. Uh, but I do have two water problems. First water problem is with my uh, tank out there, the 400 gallon tank. <clears throat> anyway, that sends water down here to the spindles uh, to keep them clean. It's giving me a warning up here. Yeah, that warning right there. Basically, the sensor in the tank or whatever gauges how much water is in the tank is not working. The other water problem's a little, little worse. Right here, you'll see my water temperature is r is right on the red. My water temperature is running uh, 225 right now, which is uh, should not be running that high. I mean, it is 80 degrees outside. Wind's blowing like 10 miles an hour. Beautiful day for picking cotton. We should not be running hot. But anyway, I put a call in to Andy, the John Deere mechanic. Hopefully he'll call me back and uh, we'll go over what we need to do to get this thing fixed. But uh, yeah, it's some really good cotton. Uh, Delta Pine 2141. And this is just about, if you were to look up in the dictionary, perfect day for harvesting cotton, this would be in the dictionary. Uh, 80 degrees, no clouds in the sky. And we got like a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. Uh, 
It's been blowing all day. Dry, dry, dry. That is what you want with picking cotton. So it is picking clean as a whistle. Yeah, cotton is turning out really good. I'm so excited. I'm just blown away. Like, this is so nice to be in a good crop after coming off that corn crop. So, uh, anyway, that's going to be it for the video, guys. Uh, we'll have plenty of cotton harvest videos coming out. So, I'll go over the cotton picker and uh, all kind of other stuff uh, in some more videos. So, uh, so, we'll just go ahead and end the video. Uh, we'll throw the drone up in the air, get some cool drone footage, and uh, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thumbs up, click it if you like the video. If you want to subscribe, come on and join our channel. And uh, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. See you, we're out.